Who is your Jesus, dear one? Is he the Jesus of the Bible? Are you sure about that? Why, Lord, why are there so many fake Jesuses in this world? Yes, dear one, there's lovey-dovey Jesus, hippy-dippy Jesus, Krishna Jesus, and Catholic Jesus. And finally, we have the real Jesus of the Bible. If I've missed one, then please feel free to enlighten me in the comments below. Now, many Christians have just come off of celebrating the holiday, High Holy Day, if you will, of Easter. I've covered that in my last video. But do any of these saints really know or understand which Jesus that they actually worshiped? Do they even know the Jesus in the Bible that he never was part of Easter? He was in fact part of Passover. We need to understand that there's only one Jesus, one true, authentic, biblical Jesus, and we had better know him or we're going to be in big trouble. I think it's safe to say that none of us ever want to hear these terrifying words come out of our Lord's mouth directed at us. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and in your name drive out demons and perform many miracles? Then I will tell them plainly. This is Jesus talking. Then I will tell them plainly. I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. That's found in Matthew 7, 22, verse, or verse 22 through 23. Do people really understand what Jesus just said there? No, I don't think they do at all. Most people who say they are Christians, they're really members of the false church, the harlot, the mystery, or was it, um, Mystery Babylon, the heart, the mother of all harlots. That's the church they belong. That church is predominant in the time we live in right now. And a lot of Christians, so-called, don't even know that. They don't even know they're members of that church. And I find that frightening. They are so full of the lies of churchianity that they actually think Jesus is not talking to them when in fact he is. I mean, Listen to what Jesus said. He said that these people are going to do all these wonderful things in his name. And then he says he's going to tell them to depart from him because they are workers of lawlessness. And he never knew them. That can only mean one thing. They have the wrong Jesus. So I ask you again, who's your Jesus? You know, and I'm here to tell you with great confidence and based on experience that lovey-dovey Jesus, hippy-dippy Jesus, Krishna Jesus, and Catholic Jesus, they all have this similar appearance about them, don't they? There's a reason for that. It's because they all come from the same root, paganism. Now, do we really know what Jesus looked like? No, the Bible does not have a description other than to say that he was not easy on the eyes. What do we see all these Jesus is floating around in TV land and on pictures and paintings? He's pretty gorgeous. So no, we do not know what Jesus looked like, but I can tell you for sure what Jesus didn't look like. He wasn't a lily white Anglo-Saxon, that's for sure. Now, I want you to take a look at this picture. I want you to see what I did here. Do you see the difference, dear one? It takes me a long time time to even find beautiful art and then even more time to fix the images of Jesus that are out there on the internet. You're welcome. And that's just a superficial issue at hand here. But what about the deeper, more, the more deeper issues, the spiritual issues? I want to focus on those. Now, I'm not going to waste our time here focusing on all the um, counterfeit Jesuses and all the uh, doctrine that they spew. I'm going to focus on biblical Jesus because when you know the real, then the counterfeit, the fake, is easy to spot. Biblical Jesus was born into the lineage of King David. We are told that in scripture. So when Joseph and Mary traveled to Bethlehem to be counted in the census, that is when Jesus came into being at his conception, well of course before that, 
So when uh, the angel came to Mary and said that she was going to bear the Messiah, so, and she accepted. So at his conception, this is when Jesus came into being. Before that, he was in heaven with the Father because as the Word of God, he was the Father. Don't like that? Tough matzah. Because that is what God's Word said. This is when scripture was fulfilled concerning the Messiah at Jesus' birth. The Savior, the Lamb of God, came for the sole purpose to take away the sins of the world. Unlike Anglo-Saxon men, Jewish men had spiritual training in the Tanakh. Now that is an acronym, T-A-N-K, whatever. Tanakh is an acronym for uh, the Hebrew words for the teachings, uh, that's the law, the writings, the poems, and so forth. It's the entire Old Testament. Now, the Old Testament is actually written, or at first was written in Hebrew, not Latin. So it actually, even Moses wrote in what's called Paleo-Hebrew. Now, if you want to go research on that on your own, go right ahead. But later, when they were in the um, captivity in Babylon, that's when they came up with the block, or the modernized Hebrew, if you will. So what did Jesus have to say about love? When asked what the greatest commandment in the law, what, what it was in the law, Jesus stated that we are to love the Lord our God with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength. And the second commandment is like it, we are to love our neighbor as ourself. And we also learn later from Jesus through the Apostle Paul that love is the fulfillment or the purpose of the law. Now, what does this kind of love look like? It's called obedience. Jesus said, why do you call me Lord and if you don't do what I tell you? Good question, Lord. For example, when Jesus said that the Father, he is the only God there is, and that he and the Father are one, then why do men go about the business of making for themselves three separate co-equal co-eternal persons that they claim to be God? When we know for a fact, just ask any good scholar, that this concept of the Trinity is rooted in paganism and comes to us by way of, again, pagan Greek philosophy. If Jesus said that we are to do good to those that hate us, then why do Christians watch movies where the hero gets his vengeance and we are gratified in that? If Jesus said that we are to seek treasure that doesn't tarnish or can be stolen, then why do Christians chant, money cometh to me now, as they greedily run after the word of faith's prosperity rainbow? When Jesus said, if you love your family and friends more than me, you are not worthy of me? Was he joking? Remember those two commandments? They do come in a particular order, and we need to keep them that way. Jesus said that the way to life or the way to eternal life is narrow and the gate to that narrow path is hard to find. Do you get the feeling that the Christian way of life is kind of hard? It's not all that groovy when you have to give or forgive the person who did you wrong. It's not hip or happening to crucify the flesh that wants to drink too much wine, eat too many sweets, or watch that rated R movie, or pray to that statue or celebrate that pagan holy day, is it? Dear one, Jesus asked his disciples who the people said he was and what did they say? Some people said that Jesus was John the Baptist. How is that even possible? Some of them said that he was one of like Elijah or one of the other prophets come back to life. Does that mean the children of Israel believed in reincarnation? How did that happen? This is still God's number one complaint as found in Isaiah and the whole Bible, really. God always, or God says, my people don't know who I am. So they make idols for themselves and I'm going to punish them for it. Sad, but true story. This refusal happened back in the Garden of Eden at that tree. This refusal happened at the foot of Mount Sinai, all, all the way up until Jesus' day. And that refusal is still going on this very hour. I don't know about you, dear one, but I am sick and tired of lovey-dovey Jesus. 
hippy dippy Jesus, Krishna Jesus, and I'm sick and tired of Catholic Jesus. I hunger and I desire the real Jesus of the Bible. And I am determined, come hell or high water, to seek him out and to learn from him what I'm supposed to do and to actually do what he tells me to do. That is being a real Christian. For example, the other day I went to the store and as I looked at these sparsely, and I mean, the shelves are still a little bit sparse, getting better, but I looked at them and I was tempted to take more than what I needed. That, that old flesh, oh, I gotta take care of myself. I have to, to provide for my own. Screw everybody else. It's all about me. No, I can't do that. I forced myself to take only what I needed be happy about it and to trust the Lord Jesus that when I do need something, it will be there. He will provide maybe not what I wanted immediately, but I will get it because loving him and loving my neighbor as myself is far more important than taking care of myself. That, that fleshy stuff is the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye and the pride of life. That is worldliness that is being of the world and we are not called to do that <sighs> enough said so i'll see you again next week dear one when you'll hear me once again raise my voice to heaven and lift my face to the sky as i ask why lord why